I think the most important thing for foster carers is actually a commitment um, and actually having the kind of staying power really to kind of see things through. Um, a sense of humour is really, really important because children need to know that, you know, that's really important actually to children that you have a sense of humour. Um, and really kind of a, a quite a, a sort of a tough skin in terms of, you know, you've got to learn to sort of let things go above your head a bit sometimes, you know. Uh, when you become a foster carer it's really only the beginning of your learning process and there's lots of um, ways that you can improve your skills as a foster carer um, the most important one is the um, skills to foster course that is run um, and that's over several evenings and you um, learn all about fostering but they also do other courses too like um, safer caring there's things like first day there's information that about um, uh, looking after the children and supporting them through education so there's lots and lots of courses and some people even um, go on things like MVQ courses and gain an MVQ qualification. I think you need to be a good foster carer I think you need a certain understanding and interest in young people but that can come from experience, from work, from training, from your own family, from an extended family. Um, but I, to be honest, a lot of it, as far as I'm concerned, a lot of it is kind of like gut, you know, an instinct or a gut feeling that, you know, what you're doing is right or what you're doing is wrong, you know. And I think if you're one of those people that people walk into a room and think, oh, I wonder, you know, they're nice, I quite, you know, then that sort of warmth or welcome or whatever is what's gonna you know is what the young person is initially going to encounter when they walk through your front door well to be a foster carer i can't really there is no quality really skills whilst you are a person whilst you have heart good heart and whilst you're willing to work with kids love kids i don't see no hardness in kids because Kids is just like if you have your own kids, your own children. To love them, give them all the support that they need. That our parents really would give our kids. Uh, flexibility, I would say, is definitely a good one. And um, you need to love people more than things. Because you can't promise that all your things might not get a little bit spoilt or certainly mucked about with. Um, patience is a good one. A love for children would obviously be important. And I think um, a desire to make things better. If you, that's really what we're trying to do, I think, is to just make a, something a little bit better for this child on this occasion and hopefully get their family through a bad patch. Um, I think they need to have a lot of love to give. Um, the, the teenage... I, I was difficult, and I know I was. Um, she did have to stay up um, for, for the first week of that at least uh, quite a few nights just to sort of comfort me and, and listen to me really um, and she just she opened her heart to me um, and I do feel like she's my mother now it's difficult to answer what because sometimes what they actually gain or what they get from it you might not even be aware of and it could be years down the line when they turn around and say, well, actually, you know, that was, it was not very nice at the time, but, you know, I benefited from it. I think it's really important for, for um, to foster teenagers. What's really important, I think, especially at that critical age, is they have a very, very stable placement. And, and I think that's important that, 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 and that's what we try and do here. We try and give some sort of stability. And it, and it shows as well, because say one of the, our children we look after has done really, really well in his GCSEs, um, you know, and that's really been through our support to him and, and the continuity that he's got. Um, and it's really, really important that they get some sort of ability at that age. But he does his own cooking now. Um, at first I did cook for him because I was cooking perhaps my tea, um, but found that... Uh, he preferred to do his own, really. I wasn't very keen on my food. <laughs> uh, so he has his own money to do his own housekeeping, which, again, is another learning curve. And uh, teaches him uh, to, to buy what he wants and to how, how to cook it, basically. She used to be a chef, so she taught us all how to cook, really. I didn't have a clue before that. 
Um, so yeah, she talks about the basics of cooking, cooking and just the basics of life skills really. Like in the, the large family you sort of um, conversational skills and that's how I learned to interact with other people really because I didn't know that before. Oh, the first time they come to me really, there was two little boys. The mother was not well and they bring asked if at the last moment if I could have them. And I said, take, take them in and wash them and give them all the love that I wanted, what I want to give them. And I remember I sit there and give them their first meal. And the small one turned to the eldest one and said to him, said, I think we we'll like it here. You know, and just the tears was, you know, running out of my eyes to see those two, what I could really do for those two little boy. I think if they can leave your, when they move on from you, if they leave you with sort of having been in the system as being a positive, as positive experience as possible with all the sort of emotional baggage and you know, life experience that they've got. And if you can sort of put right some of the things that have gone wrong, and if you can put them on a path that maybe will give them some of the tools to deal with their, you know, life in the future, then that's all you can hope for, really. That's all you can hope for for your own kids. And it shouldn't be any different from what you hope for for, you know, for your looked-after young people, really.